Welcome to the fabulous picture show. I'm Amanda Palmer. This week at the Everyman Cinema Club, we're showing the first Jordanian feature film in 50 years, Captain Abu Rayed, directed by Amin Metallica and starring Nadim Sawara. <laughs> there they are. It recently won an audience award at the Sundance Film Festival, and you can see why. It's the story of an airport janitor who dons a pilot's cap and swaps his broom for wings. Captain Abu Rayed. Also on the show, we go back to India's Mughal era to see how Bollywood's updating the story of this king and queen to this king and queen. And this is no starving artist. Julian Schnabel's The Diving Bell and the Butterfly is gobbling up awards and spitting out French letters. E-S-A-R-I-N-D-U-L-O-M. Merci. But first, this year's Oscar nominations were packed with an uncommonly high number of quality films. But will they be the ones that take home the statues? The Academy Awards are celebrating their 80th anniversary, but like this year's Golden Globes, they almost didn't happen. Hollywood's writers shut down the town for three months, striking for their piece of the pie. They settled just in time for the Oscars. This year's nominees aren't only remarkable for their quality, but also for their brutal subject matter, such as the Russian Mafia. Please, forget I knew this ever happened. Stay away from people like me. The conflict in Iraq. Shouldn't send heroes to places like Iraq. Corporate corruption. Do I look like I'm negotiating? And a demon barber's revenge. How about a shave? Certainly this year, we have some very dark films competing, uh, specifically No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood. Both films have racked up eight nominations, including Best Director and Best Film. Directed by P.T. Anderson, There Will Be Blood is an epic about oil and greed, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. There was a time when I thought maybe no one will want to see this film. It's always possible. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, and what the others promise to do. When it comes to the showdown, they won't be there. Equally dark and hypnotic, the Coen brothers' No Country for Old Men is a meditation on evil disguised as a Texas crime story. Around 9.30, they'll show up here. So for how long do we have to... Baby, at what point would you quit bothering to look for your $2 million? And it's nice to have risky movies now, you know, especially this year. I think it's a cornucopia of change and it's about story now. And the studio system is backfiring awfully. And it's fun for us actors. Portraying a cold-blooded assassin with a hairdo of evil, Brolin's co-star Javier Bardem's been showered with so many Best Supporting Actor awards, he's lost track. And the actor goes to... And the actor goes to... Javier Bardem. It's been a kind of uh, very busy season, that's for sure. Johnny Depp, George Clooney, Tommy Lee Jones and Viggo Mortensen are all chasing front-runner Daniel Day-Lewis for the Best Actor gong. But lately, he's been more into giving his awards away. Well, never mind all the other qualities of her astonishing performance. For sheer balls alone, I feel that Marion Cotillard ought to have this one as well. <laughs> French actress Marion Cotillard has already won a Golden Globe and a BAFTA for her performance as... Edith Piaf. She's vying for the Best Actress Award, along with Oscar veterans Kate Blanchett and Julie Christie, as well as Laura Linney, the only American nominee, and Canadian newcomer Ellen Page, who stars in indie hit Juno. And this, of course, is Juno. Like the city in Alaska. No. Atonement's Kira Knightley missed out on a Best Actress nod, but the film has scored seven nominations. Good heavens, you're blushing. As per usual, the foreign film category is mired in controversy. Some say it often snubs the most deserving titles. Specifically, uh, when they eliminated uh, the Romanian entry uh, four months, three weeks, and two days, the Palme d'Or winner at Cannes. Are you sure that's the 
Știți de pușcărie ce facem aici? The foreign films that did make the cut include Katyn from Polish master Andrzej Wajda, as well as fabulous picture show alumni The Counterfeiters and Beaufort. As Hollywood's biggest party approaches, most of the town is abuzz. I enjoy watching the Oscars, particularly when um, somebody from the UK wins, because they seem to win with grace and poise. You know, Americans tend to spray phlegm on the front row and, you know, um, break down in uncontrollable sobbing. I love it up here. Julian Schnabel is the first major artist to also gain universal acclaim as a filmmaker. And the latest sculpture he's hoping to add to his studio is called Oscar. You got to me. Based on the memoirs of Elle Fashion Magazine editor Jean-Dominique Bobby, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly tells how his high-flying life ended with one stroke. Ça va aller, Monsieur Bobby. Ça va aller. Ça va aller. Je ne vais pas y aller par quatre chemins, jean Vous êtes paralysé de la tête aux pieds. Hein? Euh, vous souffrez de, de ce qu'on appelle <coughs> un lock-in syndrome. Il comprend tout. Il, co il comprend tout. The only way he could communicate was by blinking his left eye. E s a r i n t u l o m. E s a 200,000 blinks later, Bobby had dictated a powerful testimony of a man trapped inside of his own body. Si, si. Merci. Did you ever at any time think this is just going to be a little too difficult to tell? I think the fact that John Doe was reporting back from this impossible place, this place that nobody ever reported back from, somewhere between life and death, what I needed to understand was how to make a physical fact out of this thing. A hugely down? successful painter and sculptor since the 1980s, Schnabel has turned from canvas to camera, only to emerge as one of the most daring directors around. Let them almost crash into you and go the other way, okay? The cameraman thought you were mad, not him. Yeah, not the DP, but the cameraman, yes. <laughs> I always say shoot the rehearsal, and uh, they don't have time to prepare all the time. Turn them over! People are shooting by the seat of their pants on occasion, and I, I like to keep it fresh so I don't rehearse. And it's good for the actors, it's more difficult for the technicians sometimes. And but it works. I suppose que même une ébauche, une ombre, un bout de papa, c'est encore un papa. Bobby, who died just days after his book was published, is portrayed by French actor Mathieu Almeric, who gives an unforgettable performance. He had a patch over one eye, bloodshot um, a contact lens in the other, a piece of plastic in his nose, a bite plate in his mouth, and his lip was glued to his face. And he, had, he was lying there with his hands on top of foam. And he said to me, you know, when you don't move, people think you're not there. And you become invisible. C'est vous qui avez commandé un téléphone? That informed his sardonic wit and also the sardonic wit of Jean Dominique Bobby, and it got rid of the, the self pity, which I think uh, contributed to the uh, certainly to the humor and the humanity of the of the of the, the piece. Excusez moi, madame. Oui? À quoi du sert le téléphone s'il si ne peut pas parler? Qu'est-ce qui passe des coups de fil anonymes? Vous êtes humoriste? On tape pas d'humour, Henriette. Schnabel's filmmaking debut is Basquiat, the tragic story of the American graffiti artist who wowed New York before dying from a drug overdose. His second film, Before Nightfall, starred Javier Bardem as the gay Cuban writer Ronaldo Arenas and won Schnabel, the filmmaker, critical acclaim. People that make art are dangerous to any dictatorship. The Diving Bell and the Butterfly is a testament to Bobby's courage and Schnabel's intimate storytelling, which has won him two Golden Globes and four Oscar nominations. 
if I get the Oscar, uh, it'd be the first time that a painter got an Oscar. Uh, so bad. that would be, uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun. In part two, we're screening Captain Abu Rayed, and I've got the filmmaker and the actor here, but I'm going to start with you, Amin. Now, you met this one, who gets to play your protagonist, at 15, I hear. Yeah, he took me on to the set of The Son of Pink Panther, which was shooting for a couple of days in Jordan, and, uh, and he gave me a big hug. He didn't know me, but he met me that day in 1993, and... and uh, Never forgot that. And Fifteen years later, he rings me up. He says, I've got a part for you. What a brilliant cuddle you gave him. What a nurturing, wonderful, no, productive cuddle. I haven't stopped <laughs> cuddling people since then. <laughs> we'll get to know more about your cuddles and your film in part two. He met her in the 